This week, Secure Ninja TV is at Marina Bay Sands for RSA Singapore 2018. Secure Ninja. Hey guys and girls, I know you're expecting Alicia. I'm not her. For now, you can call me Lady 3 Jane. I'm a privacy geek professionally for 20 years, uh, longer than that personally. Some people have called me a subject matter expert, other people call me a hacker. Some other people even call me Dumas. I don't really care what you call me, just don't call me late for dinner. We're here in a beautiful Singapore, right in the backyard of my hometown for four years, Saigon, Vietnam. And we're here to check out the RSA Singapore 2018 conference. We're gonna find out what's real and what's a steal. Right now, it's a little sticky icky out here. Not my sticky icky. So why don't we go on inside and check it out. Hey everybody, we're here at the Expo. Uh, we're gonna go take a walk around the show and uh, maybe get a little bit of an idea what a hacker thinks of this big business prezo. I feel a little out of my water here, but still my people. Let's have a look. So here's our hosts, RSA. Got a lot of big product line. Uh, they've got a cyber hunt kind of CTF going on. Somebody that I know played with it. Uh, they said that what they found uh, was unfamiliar is that they had to use the RSA SIEM, the Security Information Event Management tool. He's using uh, another popular one, ArcSight. But nevertheless, he said he had some fun, beat all the challenges. So pretty much a cool thing the RSA is doing. You got the big boys, the classic here, scanner in a box, scanner in a box. You got CVEs, they can find them. What about that other stuff? I don't know. And here's Ellison's baby. I think he's still with them. I don't know what they're selling. They got uh, identity sock, identity management. Big challenge, not so easy to overcome. Got some uh, hardware tokens. Finally starting to see some adoption of some hardware tokens. Pretty cool. Uh, new to the bug bounty game is these guys anti-hack, Singapore's first bug bounty program. Uh, you know, uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Hacker One or Bug Crowd, but maybe we'll give these guys a shot. Maybe they actually pay out. Okay, so from a hacker's perspective, I've only really seen one group that I haven't seen before with some interesting technology. They are, as far as I know, the only ones on the floor presenting this kind of uh, product and software. And as you can see here from uh, the, the screen, you're doing facial recognition and video uh, incident detection. So this is the spooky stuff from the future, guys. We can probably trust in them. They have a great number here, 1111. Lucky numbers, lucky numbers. Oh, this is cool to me because this is the future. Uh, at least 50% uh, of this is talking about five years ago solutions, solutions that people sorted out already, solutions that already have a great open source product to cover it, okay? The, your open source stuff, it's fun to play with, it's good to learn, but some commercial level, actually well-designed facial recognition software, who's doing that? I don't see anybody else here. I don't see anybody else here doing that. Here, these guys, are you kidding me? They've got a big booth that says nothing about their product and nobody's there. Well, good luck with strong key. Uh, here we go with the GDRP, got a lot of knickers in a bunch. Everybody got some emails. That's, I think they're the big ones on the floor dealing with that. Imperva still doing the uh, web app, uh, firewall stuff. Now they're talking about uh, their cloud products. Again, we got another big booth that tells us nothing about their product. Uh, okay, uh, endpoint protection. This is some other products that have been uh, compiled into a new endpoint solution. I guess Gardner said it was the future two or three years ago. Again, look at the picture. We got more pizza boxes, more pizza boxes, just what the industry needs. Uh, I prefer people and processes over products. So pizza boxes, they've got to be deployed properly. Few and far between do I see 
people actually deploy the products properly. The one challenge is we've got to buy the very expensive pizza box and then what do we have to do? We usually have to spend as much money as the pizza box costs in services to get it deployed properly. And when companies have tight budget, what do they do? They buy the pizza box and they say, don't worry, my team can handle it. We'll read the manual and we'll deploy it properly. Doesn't really happen that easy. Also, what happens with pizza boxes? They become old, the technology advances, evolves. Well, we have people and processes in place that understand what's important. Well, we can also evolve with the products. Hardware is going to e eclipse itself. Better RAM, faster disks, better processors, and more FPGAs. So your, your box has a, has a very limited, our boxes have very limited lifespans. People and processes continue to return on our investment. So always, my money is on the people and processes, not the pizza box products. Let's keep on taking a walk around. Uh, let's see, we got the big boy Cisco here. Do we really need to mention them? Oh, but they're doing ransomware defense. Isn't that great? How do I defend against ransomware? Uh, I'm pretty sure they don't have a product for it, but their, their argument would be that their products offer, uh, their product suites offers a solution for those ransomware. Here's these old timers, Logarithm, still hanging in the game. Now they're calling themselves security intelligence company. So they've now taken their uh, uh, log management product and they've built that into a SIEM, security information event management product. Now, SIEMs are pretty popular these days. Why? Because we don't have the manpower to manage all of our products. So why don't we get all those products into one bucket? Over here in Asia, I hear a lot of customers talking about SIEM or security information event management products. The one challenge is that to have a successful SIEM or a successful SOC, it really takes a full amount of expertise from the bottom down. We got to have sysadmins, we got to have network admin expertise, we got to have firewall admin expertise, we have to have uh, incident uh, uh, intrusion analyst uh, expertise, we have to have penetration testing expertise, we have to have reverse engineering expertise. And because uh, the field is a little bit behind the market over here, that's kind of tough to get all in one place. So I do see a fair amount of customers struggling with their SIEM or SOC security uh, operations center uh, projects. And the ones that struggle for too long are now looking towards MSSPs, managed security services providers. And as far as I know, there aren't a lot of very successful MSSPs in the region. Few people starting it up, but as far as I know, no locally based MSSPs, no locally homegrown MSSPs that are really hitting it out of the park, that are really doing big things for everybody. When somebody asks me about MSSP at this point, uh, I don't really have a direction to point them in for a provider. So we'll see, there's a good opportunity for a solid MSSP uh, solution in the region, for sure. CrowdStrike, these guys swear they could stop the democratic hacking and all that kind of stuff. But as far as I know, their, their report that they were so excited about was full of false positives, or at least not definites. So they got a sexy name, there's a robot around here. But, you know, they feel like they can protect the world from bad guys. These two booths are pretty interesting. Dark Trace, very sexy name. World leading cyber AI. Okay, what is AI? Artificial intelligence. Something straight out of the sci-fi movie. See, here, that's what the CrowdStrike brings to us. A toy. Looking good, Falcon, looking good. We love toys. We love toys. They're very useful in the sock. Keep the guys busy. Uh, so here we go. Installs in one hour, autonomous response. Oh, that's the best response, right? So AI, okay, artificial intelligence. Is there such a thing or is it just a nice buzzword? 
in in line with that, what I would like to move beyond, because I still, I noticed these guys, I've not really spoken with them yet, but let's notice the big difference in two letters. AI, artificial intelligence, verse, versus what we're really talking about. Here we've got Reveal X. Reveal X has got another two letters, but these letters are much more meaningful. ML, machine learning. Now that's what we're doing with data science, okay? Data science is not about this artificial intelligence stuff. It's about machine learning. How can we learn a little faster, a little wiser with all of this data? So I'm gonna have to stop back here, give these guys a talk, only because they use the right two letters, okay? I can't believe that AI hype. The truth is, if we've got this whole bunch of big data that everybody's scared about, you know, big data, the guy from Star Trek, but like really big. Uh, so if we're talking about the data science solution, I'm not gonna speak with the guys that are about the sci-fi. I'm gonna talk with the guys that are just doing the work, data science, let's call it, a, let's call a spade a spade. Currently, I'm slowly working my way through a advanced degree in data science. So this kind of stuff interests me. I'm not really sure if it's product worthy yet, but they're marketing it. So when we're doing penetration testing uh, uh, projects, the one thing that most organizations fall short on is scoping. So often organizations will say, oh, that's a pizza box from this vendor and it's a uh, ISACA certified and it's already pre-hardened, that product is out of scope. Well, as a hacker, it's certainly not out of scope. It's part of the surface. Does it have an IP address? Does it have a port? Okay, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tickle that port. I'm gonna knock on that, I'm gonna knock on that address. See what's gonna happen. Uh, I would say a fair amount of times Hey, these products are just software, right? Most of the time, just because it's in a box, is sec security through obscurity. Pen test the hell out of that. Why? Because that's exactly the stuff that other people were told not to test. So all the other products, all the other middleware, that's been tested to death over and over and over again. It's much easier for me to just knock on the door that nobody's even knocked on. Oh wait, I'll knock on the door. Oh, and now it opens. Now it opens right away. Nobody's there. Game on. I love owning product. You know what happens when you own product? Free code. Nice, right? Can I resell that code? Why not? It's probably stolen open source stuff anyway. Thanks everyone for tuning in to Secure Ninja TV. I hope you enjoyed the ride, I know that I did. If you appreciated this episode, please let us know and we'll be sure to bring you more realness real soon. I'm Lady3Jane and I'm out of here.